Now, running parallel to my nursing career is my activities within St John Ambulance Australia. Through this role, I've had the opportunity to attend, from a health perspective, mass gatherings such as the Sydney Olympics and more recently, uh, World Youth Day. However, my interest in disaster grew as I had an opportunity to assist in the establishment of a health service at an evacuation centre during the Canberra bushfires of 2003 and more recently during the Victorian bushfires of 2009 where I was engaged in a high level liaison role. So emergency nursing, an association with disaster research through Flinders University and continued engagement within St John Ambulance Australia have increased my interest and understanding of disaster health. So to define disasters, well, there's no widely accepted definition of disaster. However, most definitions describe an element of disruption to a community. The World Association for Disaster and Emergency Medicine defines a disaster as an event that interrupts the normal functioning of a community, resulting in the need for external, human and or physical resources to assist in the response beyond that of the normal day-to-day -day operating capacity. A community could be described as a group of people, a suburb, a town and so on. And as such, the application of the term disaster in this context is somewhat broad. But different from the way that it is used within the media. The media would commonly describe an event, such as a bushfire or a hurricane, as a disaster, rather than using the term disaster, which is the result of that bushfire or of that hurricane. In recent Australian history, there have been numerous disasters, primarily at a community level. Uh, for example, Cyclone Tracy of 74, Granville train crash and bridge collapse of 77, Ash Wednesday 83, Newcastle earthquake of 89, the Canberra bushfires 2003, and more recently Black Saturday and Victorian bushfires of 2009. Now arguably, the Australian healthcare system is familiar with the impacts from these events, such as bushfires, earthquakes and transport accidents as, as outlined above. And in more recent times has suffi uh, managed sufficiently the initial health impact of these events. This is primarily due to the factors such as staggered and delayed patient arrival and that most survivors only sustain minor injury. Now there have been various disasters in the Australia Pacific region that have required a health response from Australia and of particular note these include Bali bombings, Samand uh, Sumatra, Andaman earthquakes and tsunami and more recently the Samoan tsunami. This demonstrates that the impact of terrorism and natural disasters on neighbouring shores and its impact on the Australian healthcare system have become more recently well known. We've learnt many key lessons from these events and from recent Australian research. For example, prior to the Bali bombings, if you had asked each state or territory in Australia their transport capacity for burns patients, they would have cited a number that was well above the actual capacity. This occurred as states and territories were counting on the same aircraft to transport patients around the country. Additionally, we have learnt that you cannot mobilise healthcare professionals to a disaster without adequately equipping them with basic needs, such as shelter and food. Otherwise, resources are, di are diverted from those directly affected by the disaster to cater for these healthcare professionals. As a result of some Australian research, we know a little about, a little about the personal protective equipment that, which is available to staff. We know about the willingness of staff to assist in chemical, biological and radiological incidents. We know about H1N1 influenza 2000.